<laughs> we're going to be doing this again. So we're back on this darn thing. Um, this is binary clock version 2 or 1.1, I think I've called it. So we've got some nice round edges on here. These are two boards stuck together. In fact, we can we can probably break those apart. Uh, leaving a little bit of a sort of burr, might you call it? I'm not sure. Anyway, so this is our bodged up version uh, that we worked on. And hopefully I've copied across my bodges onto this one here. And that includes the issues that I've sort of fixed the issues with the LEDs being in the wrong order because I laid it out incorrectly. So we're going to put this together. Now I'm not, I'm going to spare you um, most of um, the soldering. We might just speed through it. I'm not sure, but uh, I'm going to show you how to do one of the ICs and uh, one or two of the resistors. And we'll just talk about the clock as we go through. So hopefully I'll make it a nice short video, but we'll see. And it might end up serving as the tutorial video for people who buy the kit. Um, I think I might also do a little instruction thing, but the kit will include a schematic diagram as well. All right, let's get started. So I've started off by putting all my components on the bench that are ready and we're going to solder one IC on. Now I'm going to start with the 4050s. They are all orientated, oriented, orientated, whatever, in the same direction. So you can see the little notch there. They're pressed quite up close to these 104 or 100 nanofarad uh, capacitors. And then we've got the 4060 here, which actually points in the other direction. So you need to be careful of that. Uh, on the other side, we also have two other ICs. They both point in the same direction. One's a 4081. And that's a, it's an AND gate. I can't remember what, whether it's a quad or triple input. And then we've got a 4027, which is a JK flip-flop. So let's get started with our 4510s. On the 4510, you'll be able to see, hopefully, that there is a small dot at the top. That small dot indicates pin one. And so on our board, you can see that the pin indicator is pin one down here. So they will be oriented that way on our board, just like that, except probably placed a little bit nicer. Okay, it's time to get soldering. Now I'm gonna use a pair of tweezers, but you don't need to. Um, you can place these by hand if you want to. It's gonna be a bit more difficult, but it's certainly possible. And I'm gonna be using some fairly thin solder. Now flux isn't necessary here, but it's certainly helpful if you have it, but you, uh, you definitely don't need it. So all I'm gonna do is tin one of my pads. I'm just gonna flow a bit of solder onto there. You'll see there's a nice blob. And that's so that we can push our chip onto that blob. So take your tweezers or you can do it by hand and you melt the solder on that pad and push your IC onto it. Just like that. We're gonna straighten that up a bit. It looks a little bit wobbly. Wobbly wonky is what I sort of meant there. There we go, that's, that's okay. It's not perfect, it could move up a little bit, but um, I think that'll be okay for our purposes. Now I'm gonna solder these ones in quickly. Just to give uh, my IC a little bit of stability, I'm gonna be soldering on the pad at the top. That means now that's not going to move around very much. Now we'll quickly go through and do the rest of the pins. Now you just want to inspect these ICs just to make sure that each one of those pins is actually soldered. You can see there's a bit of discrepancy there as to how much solder is on each one of those pins. But they do look relatively accurate, even if I haven't put that chip on perfectly straight. So that looks fine to me. So you'll be soldering six of these in total. Um, it's going to be a pain. I'm telling you now, it's not going to be the easiest thing you've ever done. You've got to maneuver your soldering iron around quite a lot. You also may have to um, move the board, but uh, you won't actually have to do it with a camera over the top. Although I'd be very pleased in watching some of you make this. So you'll get lots of people telling you how to solder. Um, and you can mainly ignore them. <laughs> they, don't, 
they may give you some tips and that's great, but you really have to learn it for yourself. You can't have someone else explain it to you. You just have to get in there and try it. And there'll be situations where some advice you've been given doesn't work and that's because the sold is different or the material you're using is different or the pin size is different. There'll be lots and lots of different factors. So it could be the temperature of your iron isn't the same as the person that gave you some advice. So lots and lots of different things. And you also get better as you go along. So you'll see that, uh, well, I mean, it's kind of obvious, but uh, in terms of quality, they go up that way as I've been doing them. All right, so that's our 4510s done. Now we need to jump onto the 4060. The 4060 in this case does not have a dot on it. It does have a line though. That line indicates the direction of pin one. So we're gonna be making sure that little line there points towards our divot on the PCB, and I'll show you that. So on our PCB, our little divot indent is up the top there. So we want to make sure that that line points the other way. Oh, there's no need for tweezers here. So it will be going on that way. Now the leg spacing, or rather the pad size on the 4060 is a lot more friendly uh, than on these uh, 4510, so it should be a fair amount easier to solder these pads. If you're not quite sure whether you've got a pad or not, it's perfectly fine just to run over it again, just reflow that solder, and make sure it gets to every part of that pad. And try not to bridge it like I've just done there. So this is where we are at the moment. We've got our 4510s all soldered on and our 4060 on the end there. So next up, we're going to be putting on our other ICs and they're going on the back of the board. Now, this is gonna be a bit wobbly, so you may want to use one of these PCB holders or in, alternatively, you can use a little bit of blue tack just to hold it still. So we've got two ICs that we're gonna be soldering on this side. Both of them, again, have a line to indicate the pin one direction. One of them is the 4027, which is this one here. It's gonna go over there, and the 4081. Now, both of them are around the wrong way at the moment. There we go. We're gonna be soldering into these two spaces. Right, so after a quick inspection, they look okay. So next up, we have some SMD resistors to solder on. Now it's gonna be fairly simple to do. Now the ones we're gonna be doing here are the 470 ohm resistors. They'll be marked so you'll know which ones they are. We're gonna need quite a few. Now they're pretty tiny, so be careful when picking them up with tweezers. You definitely can't do these ones without tweezers. So don't rush, just take your time with this. It's quite fun concentrating. I say quite fun because I always have this idea that I want to finish, finish things really, really quickly, but it's just quite nice to be in a quiet house soldering some LEDs and resistors. It's almost a little bit like meditation. And don't worry, I'll include some extra ones just in case you ping them off into the distance and cannot find them. Like that. I don't know where that one's gone. <laughs> right, that's all of our 4070s in. Now we just need to solder the other sides. Right, before this board gets a bit too crammed, we're gonna to wanna to put the other SMD resistors in. So that's two 10Ks there, two 10K, three 10Ks at the bottom, and then we've got the ones for the timing crystal here. So we've got a 6.8 meg. It may have been better actually to put these on first because uh, the board moves about a bit now because we've got those ICs on the bottom. Now be careful when you're soldering these ones because it does look like they could go across but they definitely go up like that. And then just to make your life more difficult, the 6.8 meg resistor goes across on the top side. So let's pop those in. 
and now we're going to need a 330k. Right, next up we're going to be adding our slightly taller components, and in this case it's going to be the diodes. So for this we need five diodes, four diodes, four, one, two, three. I was counting the uh, crystal as a diode there when it's uh, definitely not. And they're all in the same orientation, so you want the white bar to be over this side. So it's easy enough to bend these, you can just bend them over your finger like that, just so it just bends around the, uh, the shape of the diode. And we'll solder, solder those on. And just after you've done that, if you just inspect the height of them a little bit, you'll see that perhaps some of them have jumped up a little bit. So you can just take your soldering iron, pop it onto the back side of the board where that pins le that uh, part's leg is, hold the soldering iron up against it and just push. And then it will settle out. Careful of your fingers, mind, because it will get hot. There we go, I'm happy enough with that. Then we're gonna to wanna to chop these legs off. Now the next components we're gonna be putting in are the crystals and the supporting components, which are the loading capacitors, the 33 picofarad capacitors. Now it doesn't matter which way these components go round, including the crystal, so we just wanna pop them in there. The crystal is tiny, so you're gonna to wanna to be careful when you spread out the legs on it. Just like that. And then we'll just drop those capacitors off to the side. And then we're gonna pop those legs into the two holes there. And push them down a bit and then you can bend over your crystal. Now we'll do the same with our capacitors, the 33 picofarad ones. They'll say 33 on them. Let's make sure your legs aren't bent like mine. Pop those through. And then with your finger, just hold on to those components as you flip the board. And then we're gonna spread the legs out a little bit just to make sure that uh, those components stay in. There we go, and then you can just lay your board flat and we can solder those down. Again, we can come and adjust these after we've soldered them. And then we'll just chop those legs off. One quick check of the board just to make sure everything's in place. Now, next up, we're gonna be putting in the 104s. Now, 104s are 100 nanofarad capacitors. I call them a 104 because that's what they say on them. So I'll take these 104s. So if you notice, they say 104 on them. So that's, uh, and we're just gonna drop them in to each spot. Now gravity is gonna help us here a little bit until we decide to turn over the board. Now we're gonna quickly solder those and then we're getting close. Again, I'm just soldering one side first. and then we'll chop those legs off too. You really should catch them. I'm just gonna let them bounce all over the place. So there's one last component we need to put in uh, that may cause problems. So we're gonna leave it till last, and that is the, the 10 microfarad capacitor that we're gonna stick there. Um, so we don't need to do that yet. We're gonna do our switches first, and then we'll come back and we'll do the the capacitor, in fact, technically you don't really need it. It's just good practice to have a nice big cap on the power supply. So let's pop our switches in. Now the first one that we're gonna do is going to be on, well, we're gonna do the two on the top side of the board first, and then we're gonna do one on, the, one on the back side. So we'll take two switches. Well, that's too many, but that's fine. And these go on the top of the board. It doesn't actually matter. You can put them on the back if you prefer. So we'll put one in here. Just a bit of a shove gets it in. And then the other one goes on the other side of the board, but we're gonna leave that one for now. And we're just gonna solder these ones. Now there's an awful lot of mobility in this board now. So just be careful. You don't need to be too stingy on these, so make sure you go back and add a bit of solder where you've missed some, or where it's not quite flowed around the pad. 
So we've got our two buttons in there. Now we need one for the back side of the board. And I've popped it on the back side of the board just for looks really. Um, it doesn't actually matter. Um, it could be on the front, but I did put some text on here. So that's kind of why I put it on the back. And this is our reset switch. Right, next up we have some header pins that we need to pop on. So I've got uh, three here. They'll be going onto this side of the board. And we've got two that are gonna go on this side of the board as well. So you don't have to do them all at the same time. Now we can pop the capacitor in. It's your choice whether to put it on the back or the front. On my previous board, you can see that I popped on the front, but it doesn't actually make it very pretty, does it? So I'm gonna pop it onto the back side of this board. So you'll see here that the capacitor marking it has a plus over here. Um, so that's the side for the long leg. These other headers here are optional. We don't need to use them. It's so that you can use the frequency coming out of the clock for something else. So now we need to solder on our LEDs. That's sort of the harder part. These are the tallest components that we have on this side of the board. So let's get those in. So on the silt screen, I have uh, an outline for the LED and it shows a flat section. Not all LEDs have them. In fact, these ones don't particularly have one. Um, however, at the bottom, I've put plus and minus to indicate the direction. So your anode goes on this side and the cathode goes on that side. So let's not do them all at once because it can be a bit of a chore. So I'll put them all in and we'll solder some of them up. Right, so once you've soldered one leg of those LEDs, just turn the board over and just check that they're all sitting nicely. Alternatively, if you are choosing to not use the LEDs, which is perfectly fine, and you're using it to trigger something bigger, uh, then you don't need to worry about these LEDs, but you can solder wires to these connections instead. Then once you've done that, you can just chop the legs off and then continue with the rest. So we're nearing the end now. You should expect this to take you at least an hour. Um, but if you're using sort of SMD stuff um, and doing it with a reflow, then uh, it could take a lot less time. Still, I'm not providing a stencil, so you're gonna have to put uh, the solder paste on those pads yourself. Not gonna be the easiest. So I recommend using a soldering iron really. Right, that's everything. Now I've popped on the uh, the pin header connectors. Oh no, I need another one. Ah, there it is. So uh, we've got one that goes on LED enable. So that means you can keep the clock running but take the LED enable pin out. And the LEDs will go off, saving a bit of power. Although this draws about 12 milliamps uh, when it's running, so it's not an awful lot. Um, but if you take that out, it goes down to um, basically nothing. Um, and then we've got one over here for manual clock and for a one hertz clock. Now you could feed any kind of signal into this you want to. So if you wanted something that's super accurate, and let's talk about accuracy for a minute actually. If you wanted something that was super accurate, so more accurate than this, uh, then you can throw in one of those uh, GPS one hertz pulse. Um, into this and it would be more accurate than the crystal that's on board um, because the GPS doesn't change with temperature uh, so or voltage so this uh, this crystal may let you down or may not be super super accurate it's mainly a bit of fun but if you fed the GPS um, one hertz pulse into it then you've got something that's as accurate as an atomic clock so let's pop the one hertz clock on and now we need to plug in some power and see if it works. Now this is a little bit of a moment of truth thing for me because uh, this is the very first one that I've put together on the new board um, knowing that the old board didn't work last time so let's find out how this one's fared. Right so we've got power and ground connected now and all we need to do is plug it in. Well, plug it in. I mean, pop the LED enable pin or the header on. Here we go. Oh. Uh, it's sort of working. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes. One, two, 
Let's speed this up, shall we? So we can see that the one hertz is working. So I dim this a little bit. There we go, that's a bit better. So we can see that that's working, but let's have it go a little bit faster. In fact, I can make it go fast just by touching my fingers to the contacts there. There we go. Oh, I'm gonna pop the, uh, <laughs> the manual in. So we've got a 32 hertz signal here, so 32 uh, pulses per second, and then there's 256 up here, so that goes very quickly. So let's hold that for a second. So we're on two here, three, four, five, so 59 we're looking for here. So it's on six, seven, eight, nine, and then this should reset both of these. There we go, and we've gone to eight. So it currently thinks it's 18, so six o'clock in the evening. Well, there we go, it works. I'm very happy about that. Um, I shall sort out the Tindy stuff, um, but if you're watching this, you might have already bought it. So congratulations, thank you for joining me if you've already bought one. If it's not happened yet, then we'll see. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoy it. You can check the links in the description for um, a link to order the thing or also to download the schematic, the PCB layout and anything else that I've put along with it, I guess. Oh yeah, the bill of materials will be that. <laughs>